Uh, hey folks, so this week we're interested in taking a look at uh, chapter four in the Warnock text, uh, Course Lessons and Content, a chapter that he actually explains as a chapter ostensibly about content, but actually about teaching modalities. So in this strange way this week, we're interested in course lessons, some content, and modalities. So we're going to basically cover everything this week. I'm kidding. Uh, I have a plan. I think what we can do is downplay the content. And really, we can take a look at how we deliver information to students in ways that are student-centered. Specifically, I'm thinking here about kind of Frarian concepts of student-centeredness. So uh, Paulo Freire talks about this banking concept or banking model of education, this kind of pouring the information into the student's head. And he contrasts that with a model that's more directed towards critical awareness or critical consciousness. And that's really what we're interested in here, right? Is how we bring the students into the knowledge making process, how they become part of the knowledge in the course. Uh, and I think a lot of us do this uh, on ground. We've thought about this on ground a lot. So uh, the challenge then becomes how we can take our on ground tools and modalities and how we can migrate uh, or transfer those into the online environment. Now, there's a little side note here. Uh, I tried to get pictures that contrast, but you can see that more and more, maybe the contrasts between on-site and online aren't quite as big as we thought they were. Nevertheless, let's think about these things. Uh, in the on-site world, we have our kind of mini lectures and we have our Socratic exchanges, uh, the student group work, uh, class activities and student exercises. <laughs> And, and we have kind of the modalities in the online uh, that we use, right? Online, we may use things like blogs, uh, the discussion boards, uh, our little YouTube embedded lectures, uh, maybe written lectures with follow-up questions, right? Or maybe Socratic exchanges that come across over email or Prezi presentations or guest lecturers, right? In this case, there's a guest lecture from Nixon. He was talking about the distinction between blogs and wikis. But seriously, the challenge is we have access to all of these modalities, but to what extent does access to these modalities mean that we're using them in a student-centered way versus pouring more than letting the students explore? And so that's what I really want to focus in on this week. If you take a look here, uh, we can take a look at kind of a sample lesson that I may do in one of my courses. Uh, and so, for example, uh, in this case, I want the students to begin playing with the idea of sophisticated academic writing. Like, what in the world is that? Uh, and so, first, I think about the modalities or the tools or the technologies that I have in the on-site classroom. Uh, you know, I have things, or the students have their notebooks. Uh, we have chalkboards. Uh, we have reading materials. We can sit in groups and chat. Uh, and so I have to use these things in a student-centered way. So for, uh, for this case, what I could do is I could start by posing a question, what is academic writing? And let students answer that question individually in their journals. And then I could collect some of their ideas on the board. Right? And so I might get ideas like, oh, sophistication means using big words or it's all about important topics. Uh, and now once I've collected all of these student ideas on the board, maybe I can share with them an excerpt from an article. And so we can get kind of a, a, a professor's look at what it means to write in a sophisticated way. And then maybe rather than talking to the students or talking at the students, I can have the students talk amongst themselves. So maybe they form groups. And these groups reflect on the ideas that they had on the board and they take a look at, you know, this excerpt from the article. And then that's where the magic starts to happen. Because right? now they start to have conversations. And now this you know, original idea of big words may actually get crossed out. And maybe they start thinking about uh, ideas of claims and evidence. Uh, or maybe, you know, rather than thinking of important topics, they start to think that it's not about content, dude. It's about how you talk about the content. And so after this group work, the students may then go and read this entire article. And after they read the entire article, then maybe they have some of those magic moments. And then for homework, the students individually can jot down ideas about how they now start to kind of think about sophisticated writing. And maybe they can answer a question uh, like, how is it that you could write a sophisticated paper about anything? 
right? Whether you wanted to write about cars or equestrian uh, or craft beer or World of Warcraft, I've had papers on all those topics. Right? And so this model here is a model that's student-centered that lets them be part of how we define the term and lets them be part, uh, or excuse me, lets them have a choice at how they're going to attack the assignment. But how do we do this sort of thing then in the online environment? Well, we can do pretty much the same thing if we think about how we use the modalities that we have access to online. So rather than just jotting down a response in their notebook, maybe in this case, they actually write a blog entry uh, the week prior. And so I have a chance to take a look at all of their ideas on the blog, and then I can put together a real quick YouTube lecture where I start to talk about their ideas and I bring in some of the ideas from this excerpt uh, and I provide a Google Doc to the students so that they can see all of the different ideas that their classmates have shared. And now from that Google Doc, the students can go on to a discussion board or another Google Doc and start to have conversation amongst each other. And once again, they're doing the same work that we would do in the on-site classroom. The students are going back to the ideas that were shared in the class. The students are going back to the article that was shared with them. The students are going back to their original ideas and they're putting all of this stuff together, hopefully to come to some cool thinking. And then maybe they can go back to their blogs the next week and they can jot down their response to how they could write a sophisticated paper about craft beer or equestrian or World of Warcraft. And so the question isn't that these models or these tools necessarily are student-centered in and of themselves. It's that we can put them together in combinations that will allow us to create student-centered environments. It's now time for a commercial break. I'd like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. I'd like to buy the world a Coke and keep it company. That's the real thing. Welcome back. So basically the point this week was to take a look at the technologies and the tools that we have in the online world and to think about how we can put those in combination with each other such that we can create student-centered online environments. And to go back to the Warnock text, he reminds us that the paradigm of many resources and technologies is that of the lecture, the delivery of information, and requires a more sophisticated use of these technologies. Uh, and I think that this idea here is very much what Jim Sullivan was getting at when he was reading through all of our blogs and he decided that we'll not be defined by our online learning spaces. We are the shapers of space, the masters of innovation, and whatever damn system the American higher education consumer market imposes upon us, we shall rise above and create something engaging and empowering for our students. And so now the job is yours. I ask all of you to consider my initial uh, Google Doc that I provided. Think about some of the ideas that I've shared in this little lecture. Think about some of the ideas we shared together uh, when we were in the meeting. And think about how all of this stuff works. Works. That's what I want to end with. Work. Take care.